Hello, hello. Welcome to another episode here of our developer stream at World of Tanks. How are you doing, Mr. Man? Welcome back. Hey, thank you. Doing wonderful. Yeah, I took took a, a short vacation. Uh, and, you know, shout out, you know, you tank stores and uh, Jukes who covered for me in last week's stream. So sad to have missed the, the big season launch for the Tigers, but happy to be back and talking all things tanks, of course. So. Absolutely. We, we missed you. We were uh, we were mentioning is like, Bam's on vacation, but it's a well-deserved vacation. So we're, we're happy to have you back here. So, thank you. I didn't. I didn't burn too much. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I didn't even ask you how was uh how was the weather out there? Nice and sunny. <laughs> much better than here in Chicago because I heard it was like 30s and snowing. <laughs> yeah, it was a little cool, but it's uh it's it's getting nice and warm again, you know. But uh, anyways, we're here to talk about everything tanks related. But before we jump into that, we have uh. A little announcement to make so we'd like to uh congratulate uh world uh, warships what legends here they uh recently released on mobile so you can go ahead and click on that uh on the link in chat or just scan the qr code on screen we'll keep it up for for the majority of the stream here so you could uh check that out if you'd like to so if you like world uh tanks go ahead and check out uh this world of warships legends on mobile We'll keep that up th uh, during the, the d full duration of the stream today. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. I'm, I'm kind of like resting on top of it. Enjoy, enjoy this QR code down here. <laughs> All right, Mr. Bam. So uh, we have a couple of uh, updates that we, uh, we did this, this past week, and I think it might be uh, new to you. So why don't you go ahead and uh, tell the players what happened this week? Yeah, absolutely. So this week, uh, Dune, of course, our, one of our biggest uh, IP collabs that we've released uh, in the last season is coming to a wrap. You guys, uh, as a community, work together to complete the big community challenge op. It is complete. And make sure, if you haven't done so already, you still have time to log in before April 2nd, and you can still claim the HMH Huntsman Centurion to add to your collection and would be able to buy, if you haven't already done so, the Dune Wind of Arrakis tank in our store at the full 45% discount. Again, April 2nd will be uh, the last time you can log in and claim this discounted deal on the Wind of Arrakis and claim your free HMH Huntsman Centurion. I, um... Have you gotten yours, Mr. Bam? Do a little... I've gotten mine. You got it? Have... Okay, we got it. All right, making sure. Just making sure. I always log in, especially during a season launch. There's always a lot to check. There, we have a whole team during the, the, the wee hours of the morning at, at any given new season, every Tuesday, actually, in fact. And I believe Max Chaos is one of the few individuals uh, of many that wakes up early in the morning to help kick off our, our every Tuesday content. Uh, so, you know, I always make an effort on Tuesdays as well, just to kind of see all the content that, you know, myself and the designers, a lot of the, all the other content that we've worked on in development side, you know, just making sure everything is kosher and looking good and start, you know, getting feedback and seeing what the players are thinking about on various things. Was, uh, once one of those uh, early, bright and early uh, warriors that would uh, help verify that the game was, you know, in a good state uh, on, on patch days, right? Uh -huh. I, I remember waking up like three in the morning, four in the morning, something like that. But big, big shout out to uh, our QA team that, that does that and the rest of the support team. And you're much more of a night owl, if I if I remember, <laughs> Tank Sword. So this is like, oh, well, well, well relieved to not be uh, in the wee hours of the morning anymore, right? Mm -hmm. uh, All right. right. But, uh, but yeah, uh, we have the... Uh, the event completed, so go ahead and get your Wind of Arrakis for 45% discount. All right, up next. So uh, this past Tuesday, we also brought back a popular challenge, uh, the Dream Machine for the Original Nations. Uh, you as players can earn points by coming into the top 10 XP earners of your team, and then you get to trade those points for various tanks and goodies, uh, including the Tier 5 M4A2E for Sherman. Uh, that one will net you 450 points to purchase. The Tier 6 Dicker Max at 650 points. The Tier 8 T26E4 Super Pershing, one of my faves. 
And lastly, the tier 8 FE 4202P at a full 1,000 points plus meant uh, so much more. And just like the uh, the Dune content, if you want or haven't done so already and you've accumulated a great deal of points, you have until April 2nd to redeem those points toward various goodies and tanks. So last call reminder before we go into next Tuesday. Up next, of course, I have it here in the background. You guys were all here last week for it with Tank Swords and Sweet Jukes. We debuted our brand new season. Welcome, uh, the Tigers season, everybody. Uh, hopefully you guys had a chance to dive in and see some of the new content for the new map, of course. Well, the returning map, let me be clear. Um, uh, as well as uh, our season pass offerings. Let's talk a little bit about what we have in our free uh, and paid for season passes. Uh, in our free season pass, we have our multi-turret tank, one of our debuts to the multi-turret feature, the Orochi Oni. You can acquire this one with a free season pass if you make it all the way to the level 100 reward. And then in our base season pass, this is the 2,000 gold pass. Here we, oh, I'm sorry, yeah, here we have the Orochi Oni on screen now with a fantastic camo. It's a uh, big tank. Super heavy. The big tank. <laughs> <laughs> What's next? Up next in the base season pass. Sorry, me and Tank Source are sometimes like out of sync. Like I'm looking at the screen to see what imagery he puts up here, but I'm also reading down the list and keeping my, my personal notes going. And I'm like, oh, wait, wait, I, I got too fast. <laughs> in the base season pass, the 2000 gold pass, the heavy tank number six. This could be uh, yours at the level 25 mark. And then up next at the level 75, we have the TS5. And then brand new in this season at the level 100 reward, the Type 5 Kari. This is a Tier 8 Japanese tank destroyer. And fantastic key art, by the way. Really love like that, that has to be like on Hidden Village, right? Uh, it almost feels like you can feel the uh, the cherry blossom trees in the background. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's all the warm and pink hues that are giving me that that vibe. This is the first Japanese tank destroyer to enter the battlefield. Get a taste of what's to come later this season as we prepare the release of the full Japanese tank destroyer tech tree line. The Kari is, equips a reliable 12.7 centimeter gun with a great penetration and hits just as hard to support that front line. Plays well as a midline vehicle thanks to its combination of good mobility and having some armor to help bounce some of those rounds for the either the same tier or any lower tier tanks. Uh, and then also, uh, as part of the, the base season pass at the level 37 mark, uh, the Type 5 Kari Sumatran Tiger Skin. Here we have it right here. It's got the little foliage. And, uh, yeah, it's got little inscriptions and a nice little tiger on the side of it to go with our season. All right. And last but not least, we got to talk about the ultimate season pass, of course, our 6,000 gold uh, pass offering. The brand new Object 419 Topol Cold War Era 3 Eastern Alliance Heavy Tank. The Object 490 Topol, great frontal armor thanks to the layers of spaced composite armor on its hull as well as its turret. Equipped with a powerful 125 millimeter gun with great combination of penetration, damage, and accuracy to reliably take out the opposing forces. Uh, with it comes excellent mobility, giving it the flexibility it needs to get into position and maneuver through the battlefield to quickly engage with the enemy. And you also saw it there on the screen as well. The Object 490 Topol comes with a factory fresh skin. Here we have it. Nice and clean, directly straight out of the factory, making its debut into the battlefield. Awesome, awesome. And lastly, a brand new 3D commander, our Gunpei Takeda, also part of the Ultimate Season Pass. 
During all of our testing, I failed to actually ever equip him uh, and get him like, you know, to get a better look of him in our internal testing ahead of time. But uh, a lot of my colleagues uh, had him equipped and would, I would at least often see him in the MVP screens and testing. So I got to appreciate him in those capacities. I have yet to pick him up in, uh, in the live game. Awesome. And I uh, just got confirmation from Mr. Max Chaos that uh, uh, the new skin, the the Factory Fesh skin, also got uh, fixed. They had a, a little issue there where it was a little too Factory Fresh. I'm not sure <laughs> if you're uh, familiar with that, Mr. Ban. Just, just a little bit of treads in a barrel, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that, that should be up and running by now. You saw nothing. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> awesome. Um, some other things to note, uh, following feedback from the release of the Year of the Dragon season, yes, we have decided and brought back camo vouchers uh, into the reward tables through the season pass for the Tiger season. We've also decided to keep various garage gear rewards in the season pass as well for those that do enjoy decorating the garages and getting some of that garage gear along the way. And here's a nice graphic that uh, the publishing team and Tinctures, I think you may have even had a, a hand in this, uh, putting together what you guys can expect on a per level basis in the Tiger season and the length of the season itself. Alrighty, thank you very much. Last but not least, uh, also a brand new camo has been in, uh, introduced, the tri-color stripes. You can earn one set, one for each uh, camo environment uh, through the season. And if you choose, you can also buy more for any nation and any uh, all environments from the camouflages reel. Before we move on, I mean, anytime we talk about the new season and the season content, we like to do giveaways here. Um, Tank stores. Let's put it into the chat. Let's do a giveaway. I'll announce our, our first giveaway here. One lucky winner who will be receiving the ultimate season pass for the Tigers season. Awesome. Uh, we'll enter the link in chat right now. Uh, not the one that's been spammed from the bot because I think that's last week's. But uh, mm. make sure to enter your Wargaming ID correctly in the link provided and... Uh, mine would be tank stores and dash X for Xbox because I play on Xbox or dash P if you play on PlayStation. And that will be your Wargaming ID and you'll be eligible for all of our giveaways for today. Since they're in the chat, what did I win? We didn't even announce the winners. The giveaways just started here. Mm -hmm. Is the link actually uh, working? I'm seeing some chat uh, users mention it might still be broken. Let me see here. Click on that last link. We got you, chat. Should be one hour left on it. And then you'll be entered. You give us your working ID. Additionally, if you download World of Warships Legends, you'll also be given an extra chance to win here. Awesome. Yeah, and Sweet Jukes, uh, shout out to Sweet Jukes in the chat. Uh, yeah, confirms we are up and running on the giveaway now. All right. Thank Excellent. You very much. All right. And we'll keep that. Uh, we'll, we'll do another reminder and another giveaway later in the stream, and we'll announce our winners uh, toward the end of the stream. All right. So let's talk about some of the content updates and changes that came in with uh, just this past Tuesday with the release of the Tigers season. Uh, who had this on their bingo card, the next returning map? I know you guys have been wondering and asking for so long, and a lot of you had made the correct guess. Live Oaks, yes, is back in rotation. You guys have been asking for that one for quite a while. Um, so we... We knew this would be an important one, and we wanted to get it in there. So now you guys can also stop asking when Live Oaks is coming. <laughs> but I wonder what will be the next map you guys uh, want to see next in line. But, yeah, so Live Oaks has gotten a, a bit of an art treatment update and is available uh, in, tier, in World War II Tiers 3 through 10, as well as Cold War, just Eras 1 and 2. Mr. SBG, when when is Live Oaks coming? When is Pacific Island coming? Well, Pacific Island, Tundra. Is Tundra next? Hmm. Hmm. You have to stay tuned to find out. 
So here's a good, okay, Yukon's uh, bud. Actually, I, I want to address this really quick. Please add Live Oaks to Era 3. Um, we Hopefully we can get to it in the Q&As. There is a question in regards to map rotation and maps that were pulled from uh, Era 2 and 3 in Cold War. And I, I'd like to cover that when we get into the Q&As. But Live Oaks was actively chosen not for Era 3. We on the design team and development are looking into various gameplay improvements and trying to improve the health of gameplay in, in Cold War. And so as we are also looking at maps that we are bringing back into the game and the viability of what tiers and uh, eras that they should belong in, um, internal test as well as super test you know, helps give us a lot of feedback and wh whether or not we feel, you know, the true vision mechanics is there issues with the spawns in which allow players to, you know, see each other during the 10 second countdown. For now, we wanted to play a little bit safe and keep Live Oaks just to era one and two. Um, if there's a lot of interest, I mean, it, it is something we can certainly do and put Live Oaks into era three to try it out. Um, maybe as a, a weekend or week long test, just to see how it pans out, we can review the data and see if this is a good viable map. This one being, as you guys, I don't have to tell you players of this, of course, it being a mostly flat map-ish, uh, it is possible to see the players of the opposite spawns, but with a lot of the foliage, the swamp-like foliage there, it helps break up those sight lines. So it's a little bit debatable if it was even viable for Era 2. So let's give this one a week or so, and we can reevaluate how it's performing in Cold War currently. And then we can see about era three. Awesome. Thank you for that, Mr. Man. Absolutely. All right. For those of you that love the custom garage and adding some new garage gear into your garage itself, we, of course, released various new Japanese-themed garage gear. Do we have an asset we can share on screen? Uh, I don't believe I have one right now, but, but we did show some on Tuesday. I believe okay. there's some on the portal as well. I'll link the portal. Um, yeah, one of my favorites. I don't, I don't know what you think, but uh, the, the little Taiko drums. I like those a lot. Yes. <laughs> um, well, yeah, there's a bonsai tree. I, I have yet to get involved in mm -hmm. decorating my... There's the my shrines. Yeah. There's uh, the Nari statues as well. Some little bamboo fountains. There's a lot of stuff in there. Lots All of right. Favorites. Yeah. So this season also saw the release of various new updates to tanks. Uh, we're casting a net over a variety of German line tanks uh, and caught in this net for this balancing. Uh, we have the E75, the VK4502, the King Tiger, VK101, uh, VK4502, uh, OS A, uh, Tiger 2, Tiger 1 Hammer, uh, Tiger P, Tiger 1, uh, the PZ uh, Camp uh, Tier 7, and then the UK FV 215B. This, of course, you can find all the balance notes uh, in our portal article that uh, released, I imagine, last Friday or at least on this past Tuesday. It's available to check out on the portal now regardless. Mm -hmm. We also applied various Cold War updates, including heat shell changes, uh, heat shells for select tanks that have a third ammo type, because not all tanks uh, have uh, three ammo types, of course, uh, we have updated these. Select tanks will have their heat shells now replaced with HE shells. Uh, and two tanks will actually have their heat shells replaced with ESH. Uh, these tanks that are involved and got these changes include the M1A1 as well as the M1A2 Abrams, my personal favorites. The Leopard 2, 2A4, and 2A5, secondary favorites. Uh, the AMX32 uh, and the AMX40, the Leclerc and P cells. The T72B, the 70, T72B uh, OBGAR, uh, 1989. And the T70T2BU. Sorry, I'm tripping over my words a lot here. Uh, a few more here, and then the MBT-70, the Thumper, and of course, the newly released Leopard 2 KW, uh, KWS-3. The Thumper brings the thunder. <laughs> was it you or was that me? That I think that was that? you. <laughs> bring, bring the Thumper thunder. <laughs> yeah, I like it. Okay, and then we also did some ammo cost updates. 
we have monitored the impact as well as taken in you guys uh, your feedback uh, in regards to our recent Cold War economy updates that we've done in the last season. And one of the most common items mentioned, of course, was a look into the cost of ammunition. Uh, so as part of this big update, we wanted to address the worst offenders uh, in the, with the list of ammunition costs and we'll follow up with additional changes in our next season update. So we needed to give it some time to evaluate how well the Cold War economy is impacting and meeting the targets that we want. And we did a, a deep analysis to see which ones were, you know, certainly uh, netting players more into the negative due to the high cost of the shells themselves. And so while we are reducing a lot of the shells, shell prices on various tanks uh, to be lower, there are a few instances in which some shells, since their debut in the Cold War mode, were actually incorrectly priced, and th they will see a minor increase in price because of that. So some of these tanks that are involved uh, include the Centennial Chieftain, as well as the FV-4201 T95E1, uh, the FV-4005 Stage 257, the M24 Chaffee 52, M3A1, as well as the M3A2 Bradley, the BMP2 and BMP3, the Object 292 and T55A, the TVP88, our Skoda T5049, as well as the T, uh, Skoda T50 and uh, TVP T5051, as well as the Object 477A Molot. Uh, and as mentioned before, you can find specifics on these details on our portal article uh, online. Um, and then I know I briefly covered this. We do have plans to adjust more ammo cost updates in the next season. Right now, we wanted to cover the most egregious ones that were either costing way too much or needed to be at least uh, normalized a little bit more. And you will note in, in that list that I, I have kind of <laughs> listed off, quite a few of them are in fact like auto cannon tanks or faster firing tanks. Because we know that, you know, like the uh, BMPs or the M3A1s, you can fire so many shells in a match, and with the econ changes, that will be more costly now. So those have been adjusted. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Other events. Let's see. Our Shirley You Jest bundle. This will be available until next Tuesday's restart. This includes all of our April Fools commanders as well as cosmetics. And then we also have a new chest earner challenge, a fancy, a free commander's war chest. This will be live and going until April 9th. Uh, in this uh, chest earner challenge, all you need to do is deal a thousand or more damage in a number of, uh, in 10 battles and you will get one for free and players can earn five up to five chests from this challenge. Uh, real quick here. Uh, yes, sir. I, I, so I had a player message me earlier. They sent a, a question about the April Fool's cosmetics and they were asking if we could have the gesture uh, icon like the emblem the emblem available year round so they're, they're well a lot of cos this is true for a lot of our cosmetics as well as like our 2d commanders we have chosen to save a lot of these for very exclusive events mm -hmm. uh, holidays uh you name it so while some things we may choose to unlock and keep permanently in our cosmetics stores or commander uh recruitment tab etc um just know you know, as we kind of go in the future, a lot of these things, we like to keep them very time limited. Yeah. Appreciate, appreciate uh, that, that answer there. Um, we heard a, we heard a little uh, bam cat over there. The bam. Yeah. The problem with going on vacation, my, my cats get very needy. He's been very upfront and personal with the cameras on all my meetings this week. <laughs> so well, the chat says hi. <laughs> he he will have a lot of lot to say on on camera i'm sure okay i'm sorry to derail you here but we were on the uh an op challenge here yes no all good he trust he, he's sitting on my desk right now he's going to continue to derail me i'm not sure <laughs> decamp cat camo is when <laughs> should be the next one right we did a pretty fun dog camo one so we'll see we'll see okay 
So we have an, uh, another uh, chained challenge, the Show Me the Money. This is a multiple stage uh, challenge op. Um, the first one in the chain itself is the Silver Vein. Winning a battle, this is available both in Cold War and World War II. Uh, you can earn up to three times the amount of silver. Stage two, the Kaching. Also just winning a battle, four times silver as a reward. And if you make it to the show me the money, the bottom, uh, the third step of the chain, winning a battle can net you up to five times the amount of silver. So that's 3x, 4x, and 5x. And then also ongoing until April 1st, this started just this morning, we have a three times XP daily win bonus, just in time for the Easter weekend itself. So if there's a lot of tanks that you're trying to get more tank XP applied, or even your premium tanks that you want to play in and do really well and plan to uh, XP convert, take advantage of our XP daily win bonus at three times. Three times the XP earn. And that is... <clears throat> excuse me. That is the content and release of the Tiger season this week. And I think that takes us on to some of our New content and what is coming next week? The bam. What is coming up next week? What is coming up next week? Well, we do have a returning fan favorite IP. Hmm. I wonder what that could be. Wait, returning you say? Oh thirsty over there, I see. Just just taking a sip of some coffee here, that's all. Oh. I got this very nice Sherman Fury mug here. But Coincidentally, right in time, next Tuesday, Fury, as well as our 3D commander, War Daddy, making their return in the store. Um, very, this is one of my favorites, if not the favorite World War II tank that I love driving around. And I ha uh, had a chance to see this tank in person last year at Tank Fest. Uh, very awesome. So we're bringing it back. If you guys don't have this one in your collection, check it out in the store starting on Tuesday. And here we also have War Daddy, our 3D commander. Um, but in addition, we will also have the tank available in the bundle that includes the 2D commander. Uh, or you can buy the tank as a standalone or even the, the 2D and 3D commanders as standalones. Awesome, awesome. Um, talking, speaking of the Fury... Let's announce our last giveaway for today. Uh, one lucky winner here in the chat who will be receiving both the Fury Sherman Tank and the 3D War Daddy Commander. Ooh. I like it. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and give that link one more time here. Punch that link one more time. So go ahead and enter your Wargaming ID and uh, you'll be eligible for our giveaway here. Additionally, if uh, you also go ahead and click on that link and download World of Warships Legends, you'll be given an extra chance to win our giveaways as well. Yes, thank you for the reminder. You've got our QR code right down here. Ah, I keep getting my sides mixed up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, it's my little uh, leaning post here. A little QR code. Additionally, if uh, maybe you just want to click on it, you don't want to take out your cell phone, you can just go ahead and click on that link right there, and uh, you'll be all set. Shout out, uh, just a cone. May I have the ability to place more cones in my garage? Uh, so I saw actually your pictures. I, I think you tweeted it. <laughs> you have quite the uh, the cone army in your garage going on there. Fantastic, sir. All right, what else do we have coming up next week? We have a new tank earn challenge happening. The Senshi Star 2 coming on Tuesday. Uh, just by earning XP in any number of battles, you can earn the Senshi Star 2 for yourself, as well as various garage gear and much more. And then in addition, we have various other weekly uh, challenge operations, including the the bully challenge place in the top three damage dealers on your team. Uh, and you can earn a flat 1000 experience. Uh, and then the on a roll winning two battles in a row. This can get you some additional consumables 
uh, as a reward, uh, including the enhanced fire suppressor, enhanced repair kit, and enhanced med kit. Available once per day. Awesome, awesome. And then before we dive into the Q&As, uh, we mentioned very briefly that, you know, we got the Shirley You Jest event and the cosmetics that you guys can get. Um, it, we are, in fact, coming up on April Fool's. What April Fool's event is not, like, it, it would feel incomplete if we didn't just have some kind of event game mode, perhaps. Hmm. Stay tuned. Tune in on, on Monday. Log into the game. See if you guys find anything new in the game modes menu. You might find something a little fun. Especially if you're an arty player. Especially something, if you're an something interesting. I like it. I like it. Stay tuned. We'll have to check it out then, right? First, first hand. All right. Is it uh, our weekly Q&A question time? Time for our Q&As. Yeah, we don't have shout-outs or battle feats this round, but we'll make sure um, hopefully we can get something put together for next week. So let's transition on over to our Q&As. A lot of players asking, oh, is it Tog Boats? It's talk I'll, I'll, I'll clear the air right now. Sadly, it's not Tog Boats. We haven't forgotten about that, though. Maybe one day. Not Tog Boats this round. All righty here. Uh, our first question here is, uh, they're stating I've been playing for about nine years plus, and I appreciate the game and you know, it's developed and moved on and on some areas since I've been playing, but the aesthetics from an aesthetics point of view, uh, I would love it to be a little bit more fitting and have a distinctive HUD style between the world war two and the cold war mode. Is there mm -hmm. anything in the works or any thoughts about this? So I'll talk a little bit about this rather than the, the usual HUD improvements on the radar, right? Because uh, we do understand and know that this comes up very often, that players want either like a customizable HUD and hold My cat is stepping on my keyboard. <laughs> <laughs> I, I lost my where I'm at on the screen here. Give me just a second. Like I said, I, I knew he was going to be a problem today or just uh, seeking a lot of attention. Um let me circle back here. HUD improvements. Yes, these are on our radar. There are things that we want to uh, address and make changes to. Um, not making any promises, but we know custom HUD I items or going back to like previous HUD um, elements, separating out between World War II and Cold War HUD stuff. Th these are conversations I'm having with our UX lead on this, and he's very excited about some of these ideas as well. It's, it's all coming down to a prioritization. We have a lot of other items that we are tackling and taking on. Um, so there are just like prototypes, mock-ups, and things that we're, we are trying. One thing I will state is we're not going to do a wholesale go back to some old uh, Xbox 360, old like 10-year release version of the HUD uh, and make that change across the board. Because we do, in fact, have, you know, with the release of Cold War mode and uh, the modern armor branding of the game itself, we've introduced... Uh, a lot of new players into the game that have adapted and love the current HUD systems that we have. But we understand there's uh, information that could still help players become better um, tankers themselves into the game. Um, and there are things that players want from the past. There's things that players want currently. And there's a lot of uh, conversations going back and forth and what is like right, what is something that will appease the larger audience, but what are things that you know players might not want to have return, but how can we in introduce it into a, a more attractive format? So long-winded way of saying we are discussing it. Nothing to share at this time. But just know we we understand HUD styles and changes between World War II, maybe Cold War, is certainly something we want to want to do ourselves. Awesome, awesome. Uh, next question here. Oh yeah, for, for those of you that uh, didn't quite catch it, I guess nobody would, right? Uh, Bam's cat came on stream and pressed the uh, the enter button, so our notes just kept going down, 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 down. <laughs> That's funny. All right. Well, thank you, Bam and Bam's cat. Uh, next question here. Can you guys please bring back tank bowl and Warhammer tanks? 
So for the tank bowl, um, you are likely referring to uh, our champion tanks. These were exclusives for those events that we had way back when. It might have been like 2016, 2017. Uh, so it, right now, no, it's not something that we have plans to on bring in back. For Warhammer, and uh, I'm a broken record here, same for any licensing content um, and with anything that we we bring into the the foray that is licensed uh it depends on the availability uh upon the license agreements and the holder of those ips so these agreements are not something we can share information unfortunately um just know when we do bring like say warhammer back or like war daddy and the the fury tank that we did now you will always hear it from us first but i i, I will stress anytime that question comes up i unfortunately will have to give the same answer yep 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 Alrighty, next question here. Are you planning to make changes in the tank filtering system? Um, similar to allowing us to remove all of our favorites at once or add custom favorite tanks. Um, let's see. One day I want to play light tanks and sneaky mediums. Another day I want to play Cold War TDs. It would make it a little bit more of a user-friendly experience if we could accommodate one of these changes here. Yeah, so something like like a favorites sets. So you got you got your favorite heavies, you got your favorite TDs, you got your your favorites whatever in so, in certain regards, right? Um, and even like they, they pointed out, yeah, being able to remove favorites all at once or do a mass clear um, in, in better ways. Um, what we have right now in the filtering system, I, I agree, is a bit outdated and can certainly use some improvements. I will talk with our UX and UI teams and see what uh, what we can do about making this a better cleaner experience and give you guys more options to setting favorites and in, in your personal ways. Very good. Very good. Awesome. Next question. When will the minimum arming distance be reviewed for ATGMs? Uh, if not, can there be some sort of splash damage penalty uh, imposed on point blank firing? All right. So ATGMs and minimum arm distance. We talked about this briefly some time ago. And I, what I will say, and I'm not going to give you guys all the concrete details and no dates at this time. We on the design team and development have been working and tuning and play testing internally things that we want to see some changes. I can't speak on what those changes are just yet. We hear you guys. We know uh, ATGMs and what their impact are like in the game. And we are working on some changes. Nothing to share at this time. You will hear it from us first. Uh, there's just a lot of prototyping and additional testing that we need and other loops of feedback before we kind of come to the table with an announcement to make. So stay tuned for now. Um, next question is, would it be possible to default the square minimap for players instead of using the round radar? It looks like more and more players are entering higher tiers with... Uh, a little bit lack of awareness uh, personally i suspect that this is partially uh, caused to defaulting the round radar is there any insights that we can share on this well actually last year i, I forget the time frame it was probably last spring actually we did uh, make that change there was two radar related changes we did um sometime last year one was moving the default position of the radar. If you guys recall, we used to have the, um, is it this side? <laughs> we used to default the radar in the upper uh, left corner of your screen. And now we default it down to the bottom right corner uh, as it used to be when we first launched the game on console. Uh, what we also did in, did in that same change was also change the default from the circular radar to the square minimap for the reasons that you had pointed out. Yes, better map situational awareness is better achieved in the square minimap. So that has been in the game for several months now. Awesome. Next question. When the old UI crew skills equipment and graphical fix when is this going to happen when the old ui crew skills equipment I, and graphical I, th I think they're asking for do we have any plans to implement any of our old ui crew skills or equipments okay so this is like a a very brief question but it's a wide broad question mm -hmm. is what mm -hmm. they're kind of asking here 
Um, well, I talked a little bit about the old UI and HUD elements on that front uh, just previously. Crew skills, we have plans for some changes in crew skills later this year. Uh, equipment, nothing on the roadmap for this year right now, but there is tickets and conversations and brainstorming going on for equipment changes that we want to think about. Uh, that's something we'll have to talk with production and see if we have room to squeeze that into the roadmap after we come forward with a good design pitch. And graphical fixes, I might need clarification exactly. <laughs> I mean, I know we, we just had the, the Topol uh, factory fresh issue. And there was also an issue um, a couple of weeks ago regarding some buildings popping, et cetera. I, I don't, that's a very broad question with not a lot of clarity. So I don't know <laughs> what graphical issues we might be discussing here. All righty. So go, or I've seen some people also ask, uh, where can they go to uh, ask questions to be answered? So that's the link right there. Go ahead and click on that link and enter your own questions so we could answer them on stream. Alrighty, let's see, where are we at? Uh, when a tank is destroyed, there is a lot of black smoke which covers and, uh, and makes a lot of effects such that making that makes uh fighting a little bit difficult um so okay they're talking yeah when a tank is destroyed um oh and when they the, the turret pops they don't get to see that because of all the dust in play i suppose right there's a lot of effects going on I mean, we can talk with our VFX team. What I do know is there's ongoing um, investigation and simulations regarding smoke and explosions. Uh, personally, I don't know what progress or kind of um, proposals and concepts that have been made at this time, but I do know there is active work looking into stuff like that. Um, I'll just have to follow up and see where that's at and you know what kind of milestone we're, we're targeting here. Good question. I guess a question here. Can we get the option to, uh, so when players track tanks, we can hear it or, you know, there'll be a special sound effect played, uh, similar to how PC does it. I meant to, uh, our audio director, he's PTO today. Uh, I got this question last night and I meant to send it over to him and I missed my opportunity. So uh, what I'll just have to say is we'll bring this up to him when he returns next week. Uh, see if this is already on his docket. It might be because what I do know, is he already has a, a great deal of tank audio setups for future tanks coming down the line, other features, content. Uh, he's always got a, a great deal of busy work. So the least I can do is bring this to attention. Next question here. Uh, the game implements a mechanic when you stand next to or in a bush or a tree the texture becomes semi-transparent for convenience. Is it possibly is it possible to implement this similar effect with smoke or or dust? It's an interesting idea. I will say, from a design standpoint, we prefer that environmental dust, smoke. This is intended to remain as sightline blockers as part of the gameplay elements, right? Um, but I mean. In certain regards, there might be situations in which could aid when you're up close to it, just for you know better looking around a corner. Perhaps we could think about the trans adding a transparency tag to it, similar to the foliage in ways. The caveat to that is smoke consumables in Cold War mode, right? Because that is very much intended to kind of not only just block sight lines, but also be a a matter of disorienting any players that get kind of caught up in the smoke. That is the goal of the, um, the smoke itself. And I'm right off the bat. I'm also a little bit concerned with the ability of players being able to exploit, uh, like smoke plumes or dust clouds or in ways in which you get to sit and hide in the, into this. I know it doesn't, it wouldn't offer any camo factor, but you get to remain kind of invisible, especially thinking about cold war of true vision, but you get to see through the smoke and others cannot. So th there's a lot to think on it. This will, I, I will just state, this is something that I'll just bring up with the rest of the designers. We'll go over kind of a pros and cons if ultimately we feel this is something interesting to include into the game. But on top of all this, I also have to, we'd have to talk it out with our tech art team to see if we even have the 
uh, the systems in place to allow environmental effects that receive the same kind of uh, transparency that our flora has into the game. So, <laughs> or oh. Kellen, sounds like we just remove all the smoke. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there, there's that as well. Here, actually, a quick comment. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, one of the things we, we are thinking about in terms of this is specific to Cold War is adding some extra smoke uh, sightline blockers on maps where we find that there's viability for uh, like a smaller map, perhaps in a Cold War uh, high era play. But again, we want to try to block some of those distant sightline blockers so players aren't sniping each other right at the beginning of a match. Uh, it's not going to work in every capacity because I see a lot of players asking for maps like Highway or Prohorovka to come on back into Cold War rotation. But we have to address and figure out how do we um, fix those issues before we just kind of shoehorn those back into um, rotation. All righty. Uh, let's see. Next question here. Can we get a filter for commanders or uh, for the tank class that they got the wait? Oh, sorry. Oh, I see. They want to filter for commanders. That's not just like on, on a per nation basis, right? but also see what tanks that they are assigned to and be able to filter by the classes. Hey, it's a great idea. Uh, we can file a ticket and talk with you why and see if that's something we can get in. Uh, Filters comes up quite a lot yeah, like in, in various capacities in the game. And I, you know, I, I feel bad because I know you guys keep asking a lot of the same things and want to hope to see these changes. I, I said this before, nothing really happens overnight. We have to fit it into our, our already ongoing priorities, but I know filters in various capacities is a, uh, an ask that comes up quite often. Next question here. I was wondering uh, if when you knock over a tree and sit behind it, does that count as foliage or does it have any effect at all? I know that on PC it does, but I'm wondering if console incorporates the same mechanics. It does. Yes. Uh, ever since the launch of our game, uh, we inherited directly from Watt PC. Uh, so it wasn't something that we disabled by any means. Knock over a tree, you can get some camo. Um, concealments behind any foliage that's on it. Knocking careful. over dead trees does not do that. <laughs> be careful in sitting in it. You know, maybe I already saw you like knock it over, you know? Who knows? Well, that, that's another good tactic. Yeah, look for trees falling down. You never know if someone's trying to take roost in a good vantage point. Right. Uh, next, spotted. Sorry. next question here. Why do I get notifications after every game that I finish this season? But I... I don't even uh, get a warning when I enter the battle without a crew. So two things to address. Um, yeah, finishing a battle, we understand there is a lot of challenge uh, and season challenges as well as contracts that you as players are completing. And you do get a bit of a, you know, the, the, the cycle of like, congratulations, reward, reward. Uh, we do have work coming in place in the near future. I forget what milestone we're targeting that currently, but our UX team is working on a mock-up. In fact, I had a chance to see this that will update your notifications to be a little bit more streamlined in ways. And you can mm -hmm. have things more kind of all kind of put in one place and allow you to maybe scrub left and right to see what all the rewards you're getting. Now, the second part of the question is why don't I get a, a pop-up or some sort of notice that I'm about to enter a battle without crew? This was something uh, from user feedback years ago, because we used to have a prompt. If you were to enter battle and you didn't have a crew member or commander on your tank, you would receive a pop-up warning you Heads up, no commander on this tank. Do you want to continue? And from community feedback, this was an extra layer of annoyance uh, that people didn't want to keep dismissing it by any means. And so that's why we opted to include a HUD, not a HUD element, a UI element in your garage that you will always see. If there's no commander there, sure, it's not quite in your face. Maybe it's not as uh, eye-catching as you might think, uh, but we do give at least visibility before going into battle. You will see in the left-hand corner. Well, I, I shouldn't be explaining it. I'm sure you guys know what I'm talking about. But it is there. And we don't want to keep bothering players with extra pop-ups before they go into a battle. 
Awesome, awesome. <clears throat> I, I should state, just like wrap that one up, no plans to bring back a pop-up for you don't have a commander in your tank. Yeah, yeah, it's, um, I remember it was yeah, a specific design choice to not make another thing pop up in front of the, the user right before they're trying to go into battle where they had to close it, right? And then I remember us, uh, looking at, at different examples. We even shared it with the, the stream here where we had like the red outline of a, of a commander showing that, you know, that he wasn't indeed there. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, someone in chat is asking, uh, what is the next tank of the month? Ah, I didn't see that one. I should go by. Apologies. Uh, the FV 1066 Senlac. Awesome. Tank of the month. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you very much for that. Uh, next question is, which is the least played tank in the game? Okay. I had a chance to uh, take a look into the uh, our, our data. Uh, and it is uh, several of the Hot Wheels tanks that are the least played. They have the least amount of battles played. And I want to stress, this is not due to like a popularity. It's due to exclusivity. Because we've only released our Hot Wheel content during, a, I believe, a single season release. Uh, whatever season that was years ago. Uh, the two tanks themselves, <laughs> Goop Dog Girl, you got it, Fast Track and Trailblazer are sub 10,000 battles in total. Now, for a non-Hot Wheels tank, just because I, I feel like there might be a follow-up question, I'm like, okay, if it's not Hot Wheels tanks because it was a very exclusive, limited time deal to get those tanks, what uh, what is the, the least played tank? For the least played premium tank, uh, that would be the Liberté. And then if you guys are curious about least played non-premium, so tech tree tanks, most of them, of course, are going to be tier 10 tanks and probably maybe le lesser popular nations or newer nations. The, of course, the Soviet dual barrel tier 10 ST2, that is the least, most least played tech tree tank, but only because that just came out a few weeks ago. So players are still trying to get their way up there and playing that dual barrel a lot more. Um, other tanks, though, the tier 10 Chinese TD, WZ-113GFT, and then the Italian TD Minotauro. And then lastly, also on that list, uh, mercenary tanks were kind of at, toward the bottom. Um, with, you know, contracts can take a lot of time, and players can only assign, uh, have a single or so contract available uh, active at any given time. So right now, the least played mercenary tanks include the hard case, the cruncher and the sharpshooter. Alrighty. Well, while we, well, would you look at the time here, Mister Bam? <laughs> well, would you look at the time? <laughs> would you? Uh, you think it's time for our giveaways here? Time, yeah. Who is our winners? We have two active giveaways going here. One for the ultimate season pass to the Tiger season, and one lucky user will also receive the Fury Sherman Tank plus 3D War Daddy Commander. All right, let's go ahead and download our winners here. And you said we have three winners? Two winners. Two winners? One season pass. One season pass, one. All righty. And then one Fury and Commander. Our winner here is. You ready? Ready. Your doom ahead. Congratulations, your doom ahead. Congratulations. Uh, you will receive the ultimate season pass. <laughs> and our second winner here is. Bomby Bar. With a bunch of numbers, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, <laughs> enter your name. It's Bomb One Ba Three R Bomby Bar. Congratulations, yes. you are our lucky winner. And what do they get? They will be receiving the, uh, the I almost called the new, the returning Sherman Fury Tank plus the War Daddy 3D Commander. Awesome. Well. Thank you very much for everyone uh, hanging out with us today. 
and as a reminder uh congratulations to our uh, uh our teammates here at uh, world of warships uh, legends for releasing on mobile if you haven't already go ahead and uh click on that uh link or scan that qr code and check it out and uh have some fantastic battles on the high seas uh for those of you watching on youtube have a fantastic weekend if you're watching on twitch uh we will raid one of our community contributors and uh wish you a happy easter to everyone take care everybody and also a happy april fool's day if i don't see you stay tuned see you on the battlefield bye-bye everyone bye-bye